As you can see, the graph is divided into three regions, before the collision, after the collision, and then the change due to the collision. The vertical axis plots a velocity. Rightward is positive, leftward is negative. The blue bars refer to the blue cart, the red bars refer to the red cart. The width of each bar is proportional to the mass of the car. Because momentum is the product of mass and velocity, the area of the bar represents the momentum of the car. Initially, only the blue car had momentum, so there is no red bar in the before category. After the collision, both the blue car and the red car had momentum, though now the blue car has negative momentum. Has the total momentum changed? Well, no. As you can see, if you add the momentum of the two cars after the collision, the red as positive and the blue as negative, since it's leftward, you can see that the area left over equals the area at the start. The momentum didn't change. If momentum didn't change, we saw it was conserved. In this collision, momentum was conserved. Of course, the momentum of each car individually changed. The blue car lost momentum and the red car gained momentum. The amount by which they changed are equal and opposite. It is a law of nature that in any interaction between two objects, they gain and lose momenta in equal amounts. Well, how is this possible? The momentum of an object changes due to the application of a force over time. The right-hand graph shows us the force acting on each object as a function of time. The force on the blue cart was leftward, so the force was negative. The force on the red cart was rightward, so the force is positive. The force goes up and then down on each because the bumpers are somewhat springy. The two cars apply equal and opposite forces on each other. Neither experiences a greater force. Isn't that weird? Even though their speeds and masses are different, the forces they play on each other is equal. This is always true for any two objects in interaction. It is a law of nature that two objects always exert equal forces on each other through any interaction. This is known as Newton's third law of motion. The area bounded by the force versus time graph is known as the force impulse, or impulse for short. If we calculate the area bounded here, measured in Newton's seconds, we should get exactly the same value for each one positive and one negative. These areas, known as the force impulse, are exactly equal to the change in momentum of each car. In other words, the area bounded by a force impulse diagram exactly equals the change in momentum of the object in question. This is also a law of nature, known as Newton's second law of motion. If we change the system so that the two objects lock together, the collision is no longer elastic and is said to be inelastic. Despite this, both the second and third laws still hold. No matter the nature of the collision or interaction, the two objects must feel the same force and must only exchange momentum with none created or destroyed. So play around and see if you can beat Newton's laws.